What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is going to be a clueless European's guide to the NFL, American football. Now, I have been told this is a bit take of a Mickey kind of video and um, I'm, I'm glad about that. That's the reason I'm reacting to it because I do know quite a bit about the NFL now. Uh, we've been doing these reactions for the best part of a year now, uh, which is absolutely mental. And I cottoned on pretty quick. I enjoy all sports. If you've never been to this channel before, I am someone who just loves sport. I love competition. And uh, I've embraced the NFL. I've really enjoyed it. And I've, I've watched a couple games this year. Um, and I'm going to be reacting to Urinating Tree. I think it's sports book, is it? And it's like what happened in the week of NFL. They're going to start coming weekly. Uh, but this is a tape of Mick one. And I feel like it's going to be interesting to see. I don't know how taken Mick it is. But it's going to be interesting to see how much I know. I should hopefully know 90% of it by now. If I don't, you got to let me off. I'm a clueless Brit or clueless European. But uh, I should know most of it, and hopefully it's just a laugh. Let's get straight into it, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you are new around here. Honestly, content every single day, American content, uh, general content, sport content. I'm just I'm just a happy person reacting to these videos and loving life. So if you like that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button as well, you absolute legends. And let's see a clueless European's guide to the NFL. Rockets, American football. Let's go. Hello there, non-American. So you might have heard of this NFL thing over here in America. And by that, I mean you <laughs> probably turn on the Super Bowl every year and have no f***ing clue what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is technically what I did the first few years before these reactions. Like, it's like, oh, Super Bowl's around, big sporting event. Yeah, let's watch it. I mean, I was sat there like, I have no clue what's going on. Not out of disrespect. I just, I wanted to watch it because I love competition. I love sport. And it's one of the biggest events in the world. But I've not known. I do know now. I've educated myself. But <laughs> it's so accurate. It really is. And I mean, why should you? Why should you give a shit about a sport we call football? <laughs> in which we, admittedly, barely ever put foot to ball. And I mean, <laughs> you got us there. It's not named well. But aren't you a little bit curious? Like, why the NFL is the most popular, the most watched sports league in America? Why does this stupidly named sport completely dwarf the NBA? Baseball? Hockey? It's not even close. But I think the real reason Damn. why the NFL is so that popular distance. in America is because it almost is custom made for TV. In fact, this might be sacrilege to say, but I think if, if people or the sports fans are really honest with themselves, nine times out of ten, watching the game on TV, way better than being in the stands. Like, yeah, you don't get the atmosphere and all that stuff, but hey, you're probably watching this from a country away, so you don't even care. But the NFL <laughs> has got this viewing experience down to a freaking T. They got you know what? Again, I don't oppose too much, but I think I agree that completely. From what I've seen, at least, it's more about the viewing on TV. I've never been to a game in person, so I cannot say for sure. But it seems to be because there's so many stoppages, which I ain't got an issue about. Maybe you're waiting around. It's more just sort of a social event in person there. But when you're at home, you're seeing replays, you're seeing commentators break down plays and stuff like that in these pauses so it, a lot of it is driven to the, the consumer at home whereas let's say soccer for example you want to be in that atmosphere you're constantly watching because it's continuous i'm not saying any is better i'm i'm saying it's a different market for me soccer i'd prefer to be there for american football don't get me wrong i want to go to one and i want to see it but maybe the overall viewing experience is better on a tv i don't i, I personally don't know let me know your thoughts or in the comments on that because you guys know not me and uh, I'll try not to pause it too much because, yeah, I'm, I'm happy I know, mo like, I'm going to know most of it in this. And uh, it's a pretty well done video in this first minute. All the angles, slow-mo, players mic'd up so you can hear what they say. And they catch mic'd everything. Up. And simply, you get to <laughs> see things and meet characters that you cannot see in any other sport. Second down, 20, 5.03 to go. Someone has run on the field. Some guy with a brawl. <laughs> and now he's not being chased. He's running down the middle of the 40. Go Arms on, lad. Air and a victory salute. He's pulling down his <laughs> pants. Put up your pants, my man. Pull up those <laughs> pants. He's being chased to the 30. He breaks a tackle. Oh, my God. Guard, the 20. Down the middle of the 10. The 5. He slides <laughs> at the 1. And they converge on him at the goal line. You have streakers in any sport, but my, my commentary, my man just makes it. What? your pants take off the ball and be a man riddle me this in wow. one of the multi-billion dollar sports league in the world would you meet a guy like michael crabtree now what you need to know about michael crabtree is he is the type of guy to wear a ten thousand dollar chain in the middle of a professional game and oh, the man guarding man. him 
is Akib Talib. An important thing you need to know about Akib Talib, that he is the type of guy to snatch a man's chain in the middle of a professional match. And so this happened, and a brouhaha ensued. Now, this is already an amazing moment in sports. Wow. And you would think that one Michael Crabtree, the next time that he played Akib Talib, would not wear another $10,000 chain. Oh, tell me today, guys. You don't know Michael Crabtree. He would wear (laughs) yet another chain, but this time, Crabtree had a plan. Instead of leaving his chain exposed, he would tape it down underneath his pads. Okay. Unfortunately for him, this did not deter Akib Talib. And upon their next meeting, snatched the chain once again, leading to yet another Done. brew. Haha. I don't even remember who won these games. All I know is Akib Talib 2, Michael Crabtree 0. In one other <laughs> sport. Hey, that is, that's a that's a plot story to a game like no other man. That is like elite trolling. Or, I love would that. Would you meet another <laughs> character like Marshawn Lynch? A man whose run literally oh, caused a, a recorded earthquake. And the punctuation at the end of the run, as you can see, as Marshawn is crossing the end zone, he jumps up in the air and grabs his family jewels. <laughs> if Angola Conte is the most lovable man in all the sports, Marshawn Lynch might be the realist. What you need to know about Mr. Lynch is he's from Oakland. And for you overseas okay. people, Oakland don't f***ing play. It's f***ing rough. When he was growing up there, it was one of the most dangerous places in America. Oh, and Lynch wow. is loyal to the place till he dies. How loyal is this man to Oakland? He ran onto the field to fight his own teammates and then got ejected from the game in order to protect a dude on the other team because that was his homeboy from Oakland. And then after he got ejected, oh, he just took the train back home to Oakland with the fans. This man is so Oakland. Then in the final home game (laughs) ever to be played in Oakland Stadium, he was honored as the last person ever to light the ceremonial torch remembering the late great owner of the Oakland Raiders, Al Davis. Fair play, mate. Fair play. And then a little bit later, proceeded to attempt to light a blunt from said memorial torch. I have no doubts that Al Davis would have wanted it any other way. <laughs> God bless Marshawn Lynch. Have oh, I sold you? What am I watching? <laughs> what are we watching here? You know what? Because some clueless European is definitely going to click on this video and just be so confused. At least I've got, I know these players. I've done reactions to them, but oh, this video is awesome. On the by circus the way. yet. This is where only the freakiest of the freaks come out to play. Where else are you going to see a 6'4", 234-pound monster who can legitimately keep up with Olympic-caliber sprinters? This genetic Adonis is named DK Metcalf. For Incredible. fans of the Premier League, imagine a dude bigger than Lukaku who's faster than Mbappe. Now put him on offense and watch him absolutely toy with anyone who has to guard him. Or mark him, Peace. as you guys say over there. Oh yeah, you see this <laughs> poor guy who's just like bouncing off him? Just some scrub, right? Uh, no, <laughs> that's just reigning NFL Defensive Player of the Year, Stefan Gilmore. Oh, wow. you were the Virgil van Dyke of last year? Here, guard Donkey Kong. Good luck. It re- By the way, fair play to it. I don't know who this guy is doing this video, and maybe we'll check out more of his videos, but these football references, these soccer ones, sorry, like, I- I'm absolutely a huge fan of soccer. Loving the references. Like, it- it's spot on as well. From what I know of American football, spot on. We're going to be here a long time. It's going to be like a 50-minute video for me just loving and chatting. This really is really awesome. just kaiju battling kaiju in this league. Mutants <laughs> trying to murder, oh. destroy, and oh. humiliate each other on a Man. weekly basis. It's a league where only the top 0.1% of athletes can survive. And amidst all the CTE being dished out, all the ACLs being snapped, yeah, there are certain all, special players who can create moments of grace and beauty. Oh. It's this insanity, this bravery, to live on the razor's edge of annihilation and come out the other side. That is the beauty of American football. Any play can be these players last. It's sad but true, and it doesn't get much more high stakes. Oh, and when man. any hit could take years off of your life, the dedication, the skill, the talent, frankly, the insanity, needed to survive, let alone thrive in the NFL, seems superhuman at times. Uh, Yeah, there's some uh, spicy stuff to be had here. But I also understand, as someone probably completely new to the NFL, that uh, there are some pretty big (laughs) barriers to entry here. Like one, you're probably used to like 20 team leagues. How the f*** do you choose a team from 32? And what the f*** do all these lines mean? And what the hell is a second and eight? Well, have no I know a second and eight is you. I'm a European. I know, a second day. I mean, there's so many Europeans. I'm like, I'm, I am taking the mic a little bit here. Second down, eight yards to go. I just want to flex a little bit there. I feel like I'm flexing right now. <laughs> yeah, my friend. For this is my favorite sports league in the world. And I'm going to break it down to you in relatable terms for y'all. 
give you the lowdown on which teams you might want to follow this season. And by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be primed <laughs> and ready video to welcome done. <laughs> American football into your life. Welcome to a clueless non-American's guide to the NFL. I'm so ready. disclaimer, I'm mostly going to be talking to the Brits here because uh, they're my main demo outside of America. But I think anyone who's familiar with the Premier League will get this spark notes guide of the most popular sport in America. But all right, let's rip the band-aid off. Let's get it over <laughs> with. Yes. They're both named football. And yep. yes, you're right. It's dumb that we call it football, okay? <laughs> I admit. We rarely use our feet in the game. But back when the sport was becoming popular in America, feet were actually a more integral part of the sport. And we didn't know it was going to become a, a freaking multi-billion dollar industry, okay? We didn't know. Very and true. for whatever reason, <laughs> your football never got popular here. And then when it did, we needed to call it something different. So our solution was we took a word that you guys came up with, the English came up with soccer, and now you guys give us a whole bunch of shit about it. But if the NFL ever gets popular in your country, well, you're gonna have the same issue that we do, aren't you? So I thought, <laughs> since you guys, the British, gave us the word soccer, it's only apt that us Americans give you the alternative word for American football. And I've thought a lot about this, but I think I'm you ready. guys should call American football soccer too. I'm sure it'll <laughs> cause no issues at all. You're welcome. But for this video, to yeah. avoid confusion, I'm just going to refer to it as... You know what? I, I need to, at some point, just go, yeah, soccer 2. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to be like, just like, we're acting to a soccer 2 video today. <laughs> I've just got a job I did there. It would be pretty awesome. I definitely do. As American football or NFL. All right? So let's get down to the basics real quick. How the fuck does this sport work? Like, you probably know, score a touchdown, kick a field goal, good. But what the fuck is all this other shit in between? Now, admittedly, the rules of football are kind of complicated. There yep. are rules and procedures that, honestly, I, I still don't understand to this day. And I've been watching anything. since I was a toddler. But the NFL, they know their target demo are Americans. Americans who usually can't remember how to fill out their Chipotle order, let alone grasp a rule book this thick. So what do they do? <laughs> they dumbed it down for us on TV. And you, as a complete noob, are a beneficiary of this. Because I you like don't it. gotta get hung up on all the lines and all the numbers on the field. Starting out, this is the key. All you need to know is when your team is on offense, can someone from your team get the ball to that imaginary yellow line? <laughs> Be it running it or passing it, did you get close or pass to the yellow line? Then it's good! Now, when your team is on defense, did someone on your team keep the ball from getting to that yellow line? Then it's good! Now, each team gets four attempts to get the ball to the yellow line. And that's what the down and distance means. Second and eight means it's their second attempt, and they need to get eight yards to get to that yellow line. And if they that's can be on that yellow line, then they get a new set of four attempts. And they do this usually chunking their way down the field, hopefully scoring a touchdown at the end, or at least getting enraged to kick a field goal. And that's kind of all you really need to know to start out watching football. You know, it's taking a nick a little bit, but it, it pretty much is. From my experience anyway, again, if you want to, at least if you want to be able to get a grasp of it and be able to watch a game, know who's winning, know what's going on, know kind of a scenario. Yes, there's a lot more to it. Tactical play, there's so much more to it. I'm not saying there isn't. But if you want to just be able to grasp it, you've got it. It's the same with soccer. If you look at soccer, all you really need to be able to know is they're trying to get the ball into that net. They're trying to get the ball into that net. It's basic and like don't really explain it that much. If you're watching your game, kind of judge what's going on, you know? It, it helps, definitely. And yes, there are a bunch of other rules. But here's the other thing that you need to know about watching football is that after every play, you're going to see that same play in slow motion three times over from three different angles while two announcers <laughs> break down in detail even the smallest nuances of everything that you have just seen. Their I like explanation it, man. I like that. of what happened on the last play will last longer than the play itself. So don't worry <laughs> about learning the rules and the nuances. It will be foreshoveled down your throat. Remember, Very true. this is a sport made for Americans. They have to dumb it down and slow it down in order for us to actually understand it. And if we can eventually <laughs> get it, and we're as dumb as you guys claim we are, then you guys should pick it up instantly. I don't say right? that. And in fact, just last year, they started a program with Nickelodeon in which their broadcast team will actually explain the basic rules and concepts in real time in simple enough terms that American children can understand. When they kick awesome. a field goal on Nickelodeon, the field goal becomes a SpongeBob face. So if you can somehow <laughs> get this broadcast and you still don't understand this, you are probably dumber than a five-year-old American. God help you. All right.
Yeah, I need to get back on Nickelodeon. That sounds awesome, So man. you got the basic <laughs> understanding. Can someone get to the yellow line? But who the fuck should I root for? And the thing is, all 32 teams are kind of dope. Like, each one has a distinctive history, a, a backstory to the town. Saints, baby. I've just got to get that in, mate. I did a quiz. I did a quiz, all right, but it's the Saints. And we'll, we'll, I said I'd watch a few games. With two wins, one loss. We're doing all right. Saints, baby, my Saints all the way. Represent. And unlike in soccer leagues, Americans have invented something never before seen in sports leagues in Europe. Parity. As in, we, we try to actually even out our sports teams. So the NFL has installed systems that theoretically should allow for the shittier teams to actually improve. While a yeah, hard salary cap makes it so that all the powerful teams cannot keep all of their best players. Yes, there aren't any Real Madrid's or Manchester City's in the NFL. There okay. are no oil money oligarchs coming in and just <laughs> buying up and hoarding all the best players on just a couple of teams. So there is actually a chance that any team you pick from these 32 will occasionally be good in your lifetime. I, I like know this that. Might I be do like that. Anyone who supports Nottingham Forest, but yeah, it's true. <laughs> but um, word to the wise. Well, I support all of them. If you don't know who they are, for a team even lower than Nottingham Forest, so yeah, feel hit it for me and my comments, you know. Show me some love. Hit that subscribe button because it's a hard time. We it's a hard, hard time for us Wolfen fans. Don't root for the Jets. Lines are Browns. Yeah, remember how I said that the NFL has all these measures to to help out the bad teams. They do this by having a draft in which the teams who had the worst records from the season prior get the first pick at all the best towns coming out of college. Imagine yep. this. Instead of Norwich City being relegated, instead they were rewarded with signing Mbappe on a cheap <laughs> contract for the next four years. That's insane, sick. right? Like that is an insane catch-up mechanic if you've ever heard of it. Could you imagine how the Premier League would look if this was a structure? Now, also... You know what? Thing is, with the drafting, I've always... Like, I love the system that they can come up. I've never really thought it could be that impactful. But when you actually put it in them terms, I can completely understand how it could potentially change a lot. And that is Imagine, mental. despite year after year, season after season, of being able to add the Hollins and Jaden Sancho's of the world, Norge still came bottom of the league season after season. You would say, statistically, that's impossible. But be it through injuries, incompetent ownership, or just plain bad luck. The Jets, the Browns, and the Lions have been awful for pretty much as long as I can remember. Oh, man. You are a factory of sadness! <laughs> but to my point about parody... Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm this sorry, season, you guys. the Browns seem too loaded with talent to fail, and the Jets might not be a complete embarrassment this year. So we'll I see. guess what I'm saying is you should probably just avoid Detroit. <laughs> Sorry, MMG. Okay, well, got anyone else out of the 32 I should root for? Well, actually, yes. I have a very easy answer for the majority of you Brits watching this. And that is, you guys should root for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And to most of the Brits watching this, you probably actually recognize this team name. And that's because they're the one team that always plays a home game in London every year. And if you look this up, they played at least one game in London every year dating back to 2012. And oh, oh wow. last year, they played two. And uh, why do you think they play in London every year? Why are they the only NFL team that plays in London year after year? Hmm? Now, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Shahid Khan, has said multiple times that he is fully committed to keeping the team in Jacksonville. But um, here's the thing. Jacksonville is one of the least popular, the least attended franchises in the NFL. They, in fact, get more attendance from their home games in London than Florida and on top of that, their owner is also the owner of Fulham Football Club. And I mean, I did not know any of that. Wow. I mean, I did hear rumors of potentially the UK making a team. I thought they'd make a whole new team. And um, because at the end of the day, flying from one coast of the US to the other is the same flight to the UK. You know what I mean? But time-wise, it's not really distance is an issue. I don't think it is, at least. Let me know in the comments. But it's trying to move a team here. That'd be mental. I'm still sticking with my Saints, even if they do that, but... Oh, that's snaky. That is very snaky as well. And just tried to buy Wembley Stadium in 2018. Oh, Actions I remember that. That's mad. Words, bro. And that there's just mad. too much smoke here to ignore. Add on to this the fact that the NFL would like nothing more to expand into European markets. Fuck, I'm doing their job for them, aren't I? <laughs> NFL, call me. But long story short, Jaguars are moving to London. Probably in the next five to ten years. And wow. if you're a Brit watching we'll this, see. lucky, lucky you, because the Jaguars this past year just so happened to have the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. And boy, Thanks, was it a Thanks special year way. to have it. Because they got to pick Trevor Lawrence. 
may be the greatest quarterback prospect since Peyton Manning. So why, wow, like, man. why does this kid who looks like sunshine from Remember the Titans has every single NFL scout wetting their pants? Well, basically, <laughs> when this kid was fresh out of high school, he had an undefeated college football season in which in the national championship, he dissected the college football team equivalent of a prime Real Madrid squad. He didn't just beat Impressive, them, man. he destroyed them as a baby. All this without batting an eye, nothing ever phases him. He can make every throw. He's even got a bit of mobility. He is as close to a perfect quarterback prospect as you can get. Remember when Neymar first transferred over to Barcelona? That is the level of hype around this guy. That's and in exciting, fact, this man. Year's draft it is. was special because it had five rookie quarterbacks that have like an Mbappe or, or Holland level potential to them. And all five of them have looked very, very promising this preseason. So if old Sunshine and the Jags aren't your flavor, then maybe one of these other five prodigies could be a fun follow this season. I'll probably make a follow up video profiling them, but that is a video for another day. But as for the Jags, I mean, whether you support them teams or not, that is exciting for the league. Fresh talent coming in, impressive fresh talent who are going to potentially shape the league for the next. Five, ten years, fifteen years. Awesome to see, and you get to see new faces as well. Like, thanks all the way, man. But it's pretty cool to see. Jaguars as a as a team as a whole. Brits, I'm gonna keep real with you. You know, while this kid might be a Tom Brady in the making, I'm not so sure if your owner really values football over making headlines. Like, he hired a legendary college coach, but this coach has zero NFL experience. And for their off-season promo, they got pro wrestlers to come into the coaching office to have a Royal Rumble. Yes, wow. this is a professional American sports league. And yes, <laughs> oh, wow. maybe I'll give him a little bit of a pass because Shahid Khan also owns AEW. It was cross promotion. And to all you international wrestling fans, I guess you found your team. Yeah, all, that, yeah. all that money, man. But in man, football all that terms, money. really, they're probably a few years away from being good, which is perfect for you because by the time they actually move over there, they might actually have a good coach. <laughs> and I do feel if you guys get a team in London, you're gonna have a ginormous advantage with all the jet lag. You combo that with having football Jesus as your quarterback, and you'll probably have a decent shot at beating almost any team in the league when they come. But if the Jaguars aren't your flavor, then to everyone else, my next bit of advice might sound a little bit crazy to you, but hear me out, okay? Just hear me out till the end. Even if you are completely new to the NFL, I think you should play fantasy NFL football this season. I know, I know, I know, it, it's it's kind of stupid to say. <laughs> like, how the F do I play a fantasy sports league where I literally don't know any of the players? But that is kind of exactly why I think even noobs should play fantasy. Because simply- Mate, if it's anything like the soccer one, the noobs can do well. You just pick a few players and you can get lucky. You can pick a few popular players, a few random players, and you can get extremely lucky. A lot of the time you absolutely fail because you picked people injury prone who aren't going to get points. I don't really know how the fantasy for NFL works in terms of point scoring and stuff like that. I can only base it off the Premier League soccer one. But um, some people just boom with it. Just get lucky and boom, man, which is, yeah. I mean, maybe it's too late for me, three games in. Um, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. If it isn't, maybe we'll start one up. Maybe we'll do a little beasy one. I don't really know how the American one works. Let me know in the comments, guys. You don't need to know anything about the NFL to play American fantasy football because it is literally the easiest fantasy sport to play on the planet. Remember, it's designed for Americans. So they basically <laughs> made it idiot proof. Like you as a complete noob, you know nothing about it, right? You literally don't even need to show up to the draft and Yahoo or ESPN will auto draft you probably a decent to good team. And wow. here's the big secret to American fantasy football that diehards will never admit. American fantasy football is mostly just luck. Like I've been playing fantasy football for 15 years. I'm a lifelong NFL fan. I've won my fair share of leagues and I played in a league last year where a complete noob came in and drafted players based around the alphabet. No clue <laughs> about the NFL. And he crushed me last season. Oh, wow. And the reason how something like this could actually happen is because the other thing you need to understand about the NFL is that there's more change more turnover from season to season than probably any other major sport in the world. Sure, yeah. some teams and players stay good, but really they're more the exception. With the amount of injuries and all the rules to establish parity in the league, it's hard for the same teams and players to, to stay amazing year in and year out. Far more likely, teams and players usually go up and down in the NFL like crypto. So even you, a complete noob with an auto-drafted team probably has a decent chance of winning it all. So my best advice you to you as a complete noob to the NFL is find a bunch of other complete noobs. Do it in the comment section down below. Hell, I will make a couple leagues where you can play against me. First come, first serve, it'll be pinned to the top. But for everyone else who I can't play with, try to find some homies. Make leagues from six to, to you know, up to 14 
And even if you're watching this after the season starts, even if it's like three to, to four weeks into the season, if they allow you to still draft, draft, bro. And this- Okay, if I can still do it, maybe we'll do it. Like, am I at a disadvantage doing it now? Again, let me know in the comments, this guys. This is a crucial thing. Everyone you're in the league with, who is of legal age, throw in a tenner. Oh, Whoever definitely. Whoever wins the whole yeah, thing, yeah. they win the pot. Why do I do this? Well, check out my last video on why we love sports. And basically, a cheat code to learn to love a sport, bet money on it. <laughs> Not wrong, not wrong at all. You have to! You have to! You have to! Get that sport! You have to! I know. Who wouldn't know? But make it an amount so that, you know, it's not gonna hurt you if you lose, but you definitely wanna win. But the bigger reason why I'm pitching fantasy football to a noob like you is because I think it eliminates the two biggest hurdles for non-Americans to get into the NFL. And that's one, the fucking unholy, unrelenting barrage of commercials, and two, understanding the complicated rules of the game. You remember all the like second and A and turnover and downs and rules in general? With fantasy, you don't gotta worry about any of that. Because Yahoo or ESPN or whatever platform you play on is gonna take all the yardage, all the points, Maybe all two. the touchdowns. And they will equate it out to an easy to read point total that will quantitatively tell you Derrick Henry is 25 points better than AJ Dillon. It will teach you <laughs> who was good and who was trash really quickly. Now the second hurdle that I think non-Americans need to get over, and I think it's it's the single most jarring thing that most people have to get over when they, they first uh, get to the NFL. Insane. And that is the commercials. They are non-stop and relentless. Like, I get it. Y'all Look at it in the UK, we like it goes back to the studio on Sky Sports. So from ones I've seen, if you watch a UK stream, when all these commercials are going on, it goes back to like the studio and we get like tactical breakdowns and just chat, which it, again, commercials can be funny, but like from what I've seen, like he's explaining that, it's just relentless in the US. So I'd prefer what we have and hopefully it continues that way. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely down for watching more. All are spoiled, all right? With your 45 minute halves, your <laughs> 90 minutes with only one break. Yeah. It's just the best, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? We saw your 45 minutes of uninterrupted football, and we're like, well, that's cute. But how about <laughs> seven hours of commercial-free football? Welcome to NFL Red Zone, the ultimate sports viewing experience for the ADHD generation. Every Sunday, now for 18 Sundays in a row, you get seven hours, no commercials, of just wow. whatever the best play is going on at that moment in real time. That's now, this cool. is by itself already a pretty dope viewing experience. And for everyone who hates commercials, just watch Red Zone. But imagine combining this viewing experience with having a fantasy team, polymerization <laughs> card, and you got the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon of sports watching experiences. Because every Sunday when He's I see a dude on my fantasy team stiff arm another adult man into the shadow realm <laughs> on his way to an 80 yard touchdown, all the while I'm screaming at my league mate over Discord to suck my dick. And as I see the fantasy points pile up on my stat tracker and I giggle, I laugh at my opponent's destruction. <laughs> All is right with the world. It's All not wrong. Right. And I cannot tell you how much of a welcome to Oasis it's been every single Sunday, especially after this past hellscape of a year. But here's a drawback. It, it might be too addictive. Like I am legit just crackhead zoned out for seven hours. I, I forget to go to the bathroom. I forget to eat. <laughs> my girlfriend leaves me. But for those seven and a half hours, I am free. I complete surely he's gonna say he's complete i mean that'd be a bit of a kick to his girlfriend a commercial <laughs> free and by you being a complete noob by having zero loyalties to any of these teams playing fantasy football will naturally and organically will make you have a connection with certain players but the key Ooh. is you gotta have stakes to the league and i know some of you guys are legally too young to bet wink so if you can't do that then you have to do the next best thing you have to put someone in the league you personally hate. You know that dude. <laughs> you know that one dude, Alex. I cannot lose to Alex. You gotta put that motherfucker in your league, man. And since y'all love relegation so damn much, you should also make it whoever comes in last place in the league, like they that. have to do some type of humiliating yep. forfeit. Definitely. But you know, something fun. Like this dude came in last place and his league made him completely recreate the famous Sia video. And God damn it, oh, if he's wow. nailing it. Get it, big boy. <laughs> Get it good. And fair play, if mate, I'm honest play. with my sports fan self, the Red Zone channel, fantasy football, wombo combo, it's better. It's it's more enjoyable than actually watching even my beloved 49ers play. Yeah, wow. call me a bad sports fan all you want, okay? But all I know is how I feel. And every year when the fantasy season is over, I dearly miss it. I, oh <laughs> shit, it really is crack. I, I get withdrawals, dear God.
we made too addictive of a sports viewing experience. Good job, Sounds America. good. It so sounds good, warned, But if you would like to get into the crack cocaine of sports, if you get the Sky package for the NFL, Red Zone comes with it. And if you can't get Sky where you are, get a VPN, and now you can. But to those who don't like fantasy or have a crippling gambling addiction, you probably still want a team, a real team, to bandwagon. No shame, no shame. But this video is running way too long, and the season has already started, so I, I just gotta get this out. So I'll be releasing part two of this non-American's guide to the NFL in about a week or so, in which okay. I go ahead and break down all the best teams that you guys should be bandwagoning this season. But for now, I say gather up the homies, pull your resources together to get Red Zone, and start playing fantasy. Or if you have no friends like me, try to get a hold of maybe the Nickelodeon broadcast, and that'll give you a really <laughs> good basic understanding of the game. But nice. Anyway, before I go, I've been reading the comments section. A lot of you. you We'll leave that there. Do you want me to check out part two? I have a team, the Saints. I'm not changing, but it'll give me a bit more idea about certain teams. Let me know in the comments if that's a good idea or not. If anyone's still here, I've waffled low. This is probably such a long video, but I really enjoyed it, as you can probably tell, and I hope you guys have too. If you have, hit that subscribe button. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. Why not? Hit that like button as well, you absolute legends. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.